Welcome, everybody. Come one, come all. Grab your ticket, get in line, because we are the Shoot Brothers, the one and only, the only wrestling podcast in the world. Um, I think one of only about 10 podcasts. Period. Period. Yes. There aren't that um, many podcasts going on. Did you so, know about this? So, uh, thank you for being with us here today. Um, it's Cam and I, we both survived. I am Mike the Shoot Shepherd. He is Cameron Thunder Osborne. I'm uh, here. We survived the draft. We both stayed on the same show, the Shoot Brothers podcast. Oh, um, thank God. Imagine if one of us was on Raw and one of us was on SmackDown. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, we, we're here. And we're here. We're going to break down. We got both halves of the draft because, um, oh, they, yeah, some years, they, they've, it's different every single time they do it. But uh, they cut it in half. Raw and SmackDown. We'll, we'll get to both of those done. But, yeah. Um, I guess first we'll just cover NXT. We're a little behind on that, so let's just... <laughs> a there's li- a championship. A little? I was hoping for a lot. <laughs> well, a little, because I'm speaking of little, we got little Leo Rush who challenged Drew Gulak for his Cruiserweight Championship, which they are now announcing as the NXT Cruiserweight Championship when it comes out. So Really? Right. That's, yeah, uh, so. that's a hot take. That's a hot take on that. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, so little Leo Rush, man, he's back. He was flying all over the ring. The crowd was actually getting really behind him. He was, uh, yeah, he, he wasn't like the the cocky uh, manager. He was like a fun little baby face guy. So just, good match. Um, eventually, he goes up top. He hits. They call it the final hour, but it was just a frog splash, and he gets the win to become the new NXT Cruiserweight Champion. So, call, uh, call me crazy, but Leo Rush is pretty damn good. And I think yeah. I think we've known we we've known that this whole time but he's he was he was managing Bobby Lashley for some reason. He was <laughs> jobbing out to random shit who associated with Bobby Lashley and now he gets a yeah. chance to actually do something that you know like I think, fits. Yeah, he just missed I think right when he disappeared it was right before the 24/7 title came around. Otherwise, I'm sure he would have had his paws up in that thing all over the place. Well, and I think we were wondering also, like right around that time, like wh- whenever somebody just fucking leaves. We're, yeah, we're, well, yeah, we, and we, there was some dirt. Uh, yeah, said about that it was kind of like his attitude, and he was yeah, he thought he was a big deal, and I don't know. They just kind of sat him at home, and we thought maybe he was going to get released, but they're in the era where they don't want to release any contracts, so he's back. And where's the point? Also, a guy like that, you know, I mean, comments about his attitude or what he was like backstage. Where where does it hit the point where your talent is now what's speaking for you? Uh, does that make sense? Yeah. Like, let's say, no, like, yeah. let's say Leo Rush is a dick, but consistently putting on six star matches. <laughs> like, does it matter that he's a dick? Uh, I guess where, this, where, I don't where know. is that point? I'm not I saying you're lo- walking up to Undertaker and going like, "Hey, man, fuck you." Yeah, that's not that's <laughs> not what I'm saying. I'm just saying you know you rub a couple people the wrong way, but yeah. f- the fans and the critics are super behind you. And I think that's I think that's a guy who Leo Rush is. I yeah. think the fans I think, love uh, him. I think the critics love him. Maybe I think people Enzo Amore. Enzo Amore is the measuring stick for that uh, regard. How much? How much they'll take before they want to just cut you cut you loose. No matter how over you are, how much merch you're selling, he was over, man. Oh, yeah, and man, there there was little kids wearing those wigs, the certified G shirts, uh, the, the yeah. soft shirts. Imagine being just exactly. a little guy, getting yourself <laughs> over, and then eventually, like the company that you got over in is like, yeah. no, we don't like this one particular aspect of you. It's like, yeah. well, I, I'm selling all these, I'm selling this merch, and I'm deliver fire promos all the time. Yeah, so I don't know, but either way, nice win here for Leo Rush. The NXT crowd was behind him, so he's found his he's found his spot. He's back. The full sail crowd, as they call it. Yeah, the full sail crowd, which I think soon they're gonna have to branch out from uh, if they want to be doing this Wednesday night war live thing every night. Start touring some uh, some buildings. Well, I mean, we're coming up on week three of potentially like losing. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and uh, yeah. yeah, you know someone. <laughs> You know someone is uh, you know, turning in their not grave yet. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. Any other guess, n- any other news from uh from NXT last week? Yeah, just kind of uh, more just building angles. Ciampa was out, and he was yeah just cutting promos on uh, he wants that championship back, and uh, yeah, well, the main event was Kushida versus Walter. That was an awesome match. That one's worth checking out, but. Yeah, other than that title change, nothing too uh, 
Just just some good wrestling, like Bianca Belair beat Dakota Kai. Rhea Ripley won a match, so Belair and Ripley are kind of saying they both deserve the next title shot. So see where that goes. Could be great. But yeah, it's, it still it still feels like NXT is trying to pull out all of the stops to counter AEW. I heard I think I heard last week they went 15 minutes long on the USA Network to kind of retain a little bit of the audience there. We've had multiple. Like you know, I mean, how many uh, what championship matches have we had over the last two weeks? Yeah. Right, like they yeah. are pulling out all the stops, and they're still losing. This is yeah. tough. This is tough. Well, I think at the beginning, it's it, this is the way it was going to be, and then we'll just kind of see where the plane evens out at six months down the road. But uh, yeah, either way, the wrestling was good. But um, yeah, we'll see where. I don't know. War Games is in like a month, a month and a half. So they got lots of time to build those matches up. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. That's all that's all, that's all we can say. Yeah. Um is that is that it for the uh for NXT for the one, uh, Wednesday yeah, Night Wars week 2? Yeah, uh other than Dream cut another cut another little promo there. Uh, he had a naked picture of Roderick Strong wearing the North American title. And then he removed the title, and there was a tiny blur. So just making fun, implying he has a small penis. Was it the one yeah. where he was uh, like lying on the couch with the sunglasses? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a <laughs> that's a funny photo. He po- so. he, po- he posted one on Instagram uh, like a couple days after that one, which was the exact same photo, but with like his two year old kid. <laughs> so it's like his two year old son with sunglasses on you know the belt cover i mean the belt cover is three quarters of the kid but it's <laughs> yeah, uh it's it's it was still a pretty funny photo that's funny yeah that's all that's all i got for this nxt here. there you have it there you have it nxt you know i mean we can spend 45 minutes on an episode of AEW and uh seven on an episode of nxt so that's great that's great <laughs> i mean i could go more if <laughs> you you're good <laughs> yeah well maybe someone maybe, else didn't watch it so. what one day one day one or one of these weeks nxt is going to get the uh the time it deserves on our show <laughs> yeah one of well, these days there's going to be some kind of like perfect storm where nxt gets covered it's always that, yeah, because it's on, I don't know, it just always falls in that middle zone. In the middle zone, other right? other shows, yeah. yeah. Anyways, anyways, there you have it, folks. That was, uh, that was NXT, uh, that was all your NXT news for the week. Um, before we move on with our show, uh, let's just, let's just kind of start chatting about some news going on. Let's take ourselves a trip around the ring. Around. Little tidbits coming around, coming from around the world. Of course, uh, there was a New Japan show last weekend, or this past weekend, I should say, where many of the Amer- um, North American and European stars weren't able to attend due to a typhoon that was happening in the area. Yes. Uh, however, of course, uh, New Japan loves to book on the spot, and they did just that. So instead of John Moxley heading over to Japan uh, to defend his IWGP United States title, he was just stripped. <clears throat> Excuse me. Was just stripped of the title, uh, you know. But you know, this the show must go on. There was a match for the title between Lance Archer and Juice Robinson. Mike, I don't know if you caught the match. Uh, it was another damn fine match out of Japan. Uh, Lance Archer ends up getting the win, so he is your new IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. But that um, United States. Sorry, U- United States Champion. That was my mistake. <laughs> yes. That was my mistake. But. No. The match was supposed to be John Moxley and Zack Sabre Jr., which I think would have been sick. Yeah, like, that no, was the this, match uh... we were supposed to get, and we actually ended up for them for them having to book something on you know probably less than forty eight hours notice. We ended up getting a pretty damn good match. Yeah, no, this was my top news item as well for the thing here, but um, yeah, also that Jushin Thunder Liger match. He's uh... he's back. He's back. He's and he's on his retirement tour. He's got uh, you know January fifth or whatever. Yeah, I love it. Have you seen his his Keishin Liger transformation? I have seen this little yeah. He's, like when he rips the mask off and he's got like the face paint on. He's like fucking crazy. Does it, does it still count crazy. if you have face paint on? I guess he's like a different character. He's Keishin. It's like the fiend at that point. It's like a whole new dude. 
Yeah. Like but, a whole yeah. new guy. Later on in that night, we also got uh, Kota Ibushi beating, uh, beating Evil in a match uh, for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship match at the Tokyo Dome. So right now, Kota Ibushi is still the... I uh, the fuck which one of them the ic title holder <laughs> on that side i believe um the white leather one right? yes that strap. that's correct <laughs> yeah but when uh, it's all dinged up but he's gonna get a challenge for the iwgp title uh of course we had because the heavyweight Cop, title the heavyweight title rather, which he so. has never held right he has never held no he's held yeah, the junior but, heavyweight title a bunch but yeah. never the uh world heavyweight never title. that yeah so that'd be that'd be big 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 win for him and uh, Ksuchika Okada defeated Sonata in th- uh, in a pretty in a pretty good match. Also, at the end of the night, Kota Bushi came out, and they sort of did the stare down. Uh, Ksuchika Okada gives him the look of like I don't give a shit. Drops his belt <laughs> in the middle of the ring and just fucking walks on out, just like leaving it. Ooh. So I really I don't know what the hell's gonna happen. It almost seemed as though he was like personally vacating his own belt. Hmm. Uh, it, it it seemed like a little thing, but of course, I mean, what we're what we're still a few months away from uh, you know, from the Tokyo Dome, from Wrestle Kingdom fourteen. Yeah, uh, that's not till January there, so so we have some time to play. But I I don't know. I have a feeling like there's gonna be something big happen between now and then. Yeah. Either way, we'll we'll cover that show. That's their WrestleMania. <laughs> they get their own. They get their <laughs> own show. We'll cover. So, uh, Mike, yeah. you have any uh, you have any news around the ring? Oh yeah, this is some big news. What you got? Big news, uh, <laughs> because at Crown Jewel that we will have the return of the World Cup, but this time it will be a tag team. So uh, who will be the best tag team in the world? I don't know. We're gonna have the world's largest tag team turmoil match to determine. I don't know what. Well, who can Shane team up with? It doesn't. It <laughs> no, doesn't, he's gone. He's not allowed. That's what they he's always fired. say. He's fired. If that's um, but if that Saudi prince, if he wants Shane McMahon on the show. You better guess, believe yeah. Shane McMahon showing up on that show. Maybe he just loves that Here Comes the Money song. And this <laughs> Saudi prince just wants to hear that fucking song. <laughs> that's the, the basically the whole definition of the them going to Saudi Arabia. Pretty much. Here comes the yeah. money, baby. Money, uh, money. What else we got? We're moving around the ring. We're sticking in the crown jewel, though. Reports have come out. Uh, Tyson Fury will be taking home in the ballpark of $15 million U.S., for his yeah. fight against Braun Strowman at uh, at Crown Jewel. Yeah, that's not bad. That's not you bad. Know? Considering Goldberg, I think, did two. <laughs> that was his payday. Um, yeah. That's insane. I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm sure the nerds out there online can find way, how much, uh, what's his name, uh, Floyd Mayweather took home in that match against Big Show. But $15 million seems like a lot. For one, yeah. I mean... Think Connor McDavid, the the best player in the NHL, makes like twelve and a half, and he has to play all eighty two games and <laughs> practices. Like Twenty three <laughs> minutes a night for eighty two yeah. games, and McDavid <laughs> is still not making what Tyson Fury is going to do in seven in one night, in like a half an hour, twenty minutes. 15, not, not yeah, 10, yeah, five, in, two, in, one, including time down know. the ring and back. Yeah, twenty, yeah. twenty two and a half. You called it here for yeah, so. called call it here first, folks. Um, one final little bit of news from around the ring for me. Uh, in a recent creative shift, Eric Bischoff is out as the uh, you know as a creative lead on um, on Friday Night SmackDown on Fox. But instead, I mean, how how else are you going to capture a young audience? With uh, an old guy like Bruce Pritchard, with an Pritchard. old fucking guy like Bruce Pritchard, <laughs> nothing says nothing says connect with the young people like a like a sixty five year old man. Well, is he younger than Eric? I don't know. They're, they're probably Does it matter that. though? Well, uh, we all liked when Bruce came back on Raw and. Uh, that Ric Flair thing happened. <laughs> so oh, the, oh, the Rick. Yeah. If, okay. If, yeah. Okay. If Bruce Pritchard can pull out, you know, a fucking Batista dragon Ric Flair. Of course, we're all yeah. going to give him the chance. I don't think we have much of a choice. But it seems like a weird move for uh, for a company that's trying to compete, especially, you know, they're on Fox. They're trying to compete with ratings. I think young people is always something that's important. Uh, I, you know, I can, I, if young people, you know, or, you know, teens and uh, kind you know, of that. I, what are I you think a say? lot of the, a lot of the, you know, Bruce Pritchard. He's got that podcast. He's pretty popular with the the younger younger crowd these days, no? Yeah, that 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 is entirely possible, right? I'd be interested. <laughs> I'd be interested. He's to got see Conrad the, to straighten him out. <laughs> I'd be interested to see the uh, like the breakdown splits between AEW 
and the other shows. Is AEW pulling more of that like 18 to 35 thing? Is WWE pull more kids, right? Because if we're talking children, a 65-year-old man writing a show for children is probably not the best idea, right? <laughs> so then it's like, now it's like, hey, who are we trying to appeal to? The adults are going to be there because the kids are there. Is it still wow. the eight, that 18 to 35 or 18 to 39 or whatever they say it is? Well, I mean, if you saw that massage segment, I don't think this is all for children, you know. Yeah, because a pair. Oh my god! Oh my god, my well, god! Wait, we're, 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 yeah, we're we're gonna get. To I don't that. even. I don't <laughs> even know where to go with that. I don't even know where to go with that. But uh, but there you have it. There's some. There's a little bit of news around the ring. Baby, hey, it's becoming a st- that segment's becoming a pretty uh pretty stable uh stable thing in our lives these days. You know, yeah, well, we can't it? control it. It's it's you know it's what the world gives to us, and then we take it in. Raise it and give it back to you people at home. <laughs> Just give it back to you people. Um, yeah, <laughs> you that's people. right, folks. That's right, folks. Moving right along here in the show. Um, we're about let's let we're we're kind of warmed up. You know, I'm a li- I'm a little limber as it is right yeah. now, right? So let's get ourselves um, into something that we do most weeks, and then I'm I'm gonna say <laughs> almost all of them. Maybe we've never even missed one, folks. It is our tweet of the week. It's the tweet of the week. Yeah, maybe maybe this uh, was missed once, but of course it's maybe the tweet of the week. Yeah, similar to that twenty four seven title can be defended at any time. Yeah, right. It doesn't matter anybody. And those marks are sitting there at home saying like, "Oh, those guys put out two shows in in like four days. Oh, that's hardly a week." Let me say, "Fuck you" to you marks out there. You know, because uh, because the tweet of the week champion doesn't stop. Yeah, you know, like um, like what. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Mike. You know, Good one, yeah, Mike. Okay. Tweet of the week. So, <laughs> no, I had some grand um, lunar calendar thoughts going on. Okay, uh, you know, something sometimes a month will end and the next day starts. So does your week end when the month begins or does your week have to start on a Sunday every time? Or who who decides? We decide. Who, God who, damn it. Who? 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 who Thank you. Who, who. Thank you, New Day fans everywhere. Thank you, New Day fans everywhere. Uh, y'all's are great. Um, but <laughs> this week tweet of the, this week's tweet of the week uh, champion goes to some guy who just can't shut the fuck up. Seth Rollins. <laughs> Seth Ro- Seth Rollins is um, now a three time uh, tweet of the week champion. Of course, uh, just somebody <laughs> who just can't shut the fuck up. Some, yeah. uh, so he. Uh, so he um, in just on Twitter. So he's back since that since he said some bullshit to Sasha Banks or whatever. So he mm-hmm. says um, uh, just to somebody complaining about that Hell in a Cell finish. He responds with correction. It ended in a ref stoppage. When a body isn't moving, the official has to make the right call. <laughs> right? Okay. Whatever. We get that. Right? Then some dude responds just with a gif of that. Uh, king of the of that King of the Ring Hell in a Cell Undertaker Mankind and just it's the gif of Mankind just going straight through the hell straight through the <laughs> cell and like not moving. Yeah. So he responds to this this fan this fan of his presumably or fan of the product I don't know. He responds with I imagine Mick and Taker might have liked the ref to stop the match there might have added a few more years to Mick's incredible career just a thought. Oi. Oi, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't, you, gotta, you gotta know when to just Shut <laughs> get up. off the Twitter, Shut man. The, okay, <laughs> and see what here's what gets me. About like, so, that's that's a that's a not he didn't mean to, but he's that's yeah. You're taking a dig at McFoley for no reason, and also and you're, that, you're assuming things on his behalf, and <laughs> also that match going on, I feel like is half the reason it's why legendary. it was what it was. Yeah. Right. Arguably, Mick Foley may not be a three-time world champion without the if it that wasn't match going for down the that way. match, yeah. right? And just to hear this, like Seth, you're your comp. Seth is his company's top babyface. Well, th- that's what they want. <laughs> well, well, that's what they're telling. That's what they're telling yeah, us. He should that's what, be. Yeah, he's booked like that. He's that. booked yeah. like he is the top face of this company, b- but acts <laughs> like he's like doesn't give a shit about his job. He's like, yeah, but it's not in the way like Randy Orton does it in a funny no, way. Randy Orton just, <laughs> can do no wrong. Seth is in like <laughs> on, a fucking like Twitter. high school little bitch fit way. <laughs> yeah, Seth Rollins seems like, yeah, I, I bet like in high school he just wanted to go to his room and play loud music, you know? Yeah. He's that. Well, you know, I think and this complain. whole burn it down thing probably started when like he seemed like one of those guys who would like, um, 
use like his lighter and axe body spray in tandem. <laughs> remember those guys? I remember oh, yeah. going to a guy's house one time and he took his axe body spray and he sprayed it on the wall and he like wrote something. He might have wrote, written his name out in cursive <laughs> or something and then just like lit the one side and then the whole thing just lit went, his wall on <laughs> fire for a bit. Just for a second. <laughs> just for yeah. a second. He almost burnt it down. <laughs> just for a little yeah. bit though. So Seth's a pyromaniac and he can't take any sort of criticism at all. None. None. He just can't take it. Like yeah, I don't I just don't get it. Like Becky's not doing this. She's pretty quiet. Oh, John Tavares scores. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Leafs talk. We're Leafs up on talk. we're up on Leafs talk. Johnny T. Way to go. The captain. Yes. But no, Becky Lynch, she's got good Twitter game. She's not she's every and, once in a while she'll just say something funny, something clever, and she's not bitching out of it. And if, Make so, t- if yeah. someone has a straight pipe to Becky, can you please just tell her? Maybe she can tell Seth to shut the fuck yeah, up. Yeah, like you're being a bitch, man. Someone I know I'm the man, but do you're, this. we don't need you. Don't need to be the bitch if I'm the man. Man, okay? I would love like a fate, <laughs> like a heel turn, but on and, and on a wrestling couple, like that's yeah, like the Becky in-ring turns segment on Seth. of is Becky saying I'm the man and you're a little bitch. <laughs> yeah, it's like oh that shit, that would be awesome. Okay, here we go. Here it's we at go. the point now where the crowd would pop for it. They cheer Becky for saying that. They cheered. Oh, did you hear <laughs> Seth? <laughs> He was getting booed like a fucking. Not, uh, he's, he's getting booed like we were booing him for a brief yeah. period of time, for a brief period of time, folks. But it's he's he's entering Roman Reigns territory now. I think close. He's like, making Roman Reigns look great. Yeah, look it's great. gonna get to a point. I give. I could see it getting to a point where people would cheer Roman over Seth if they keep booking him the way he is. I think it's kind of happening. He's, we're talking yeah. about Roman. We're talking about Seth. Our tweet of the week is over, folks. I think it's about time we move on. Yeah. What uh, a. F- what, what a, a natural segue. What a natural segue that was. <laughs> Unplanned. Like, I'm so glad you brought that up, folks. Of course, we're talking about Friday Night SmackDown. Okay, folks, it's Friday night. It's time for SmackDown Live. It, uh, it used to be on Tuesday, but then uh, I think it was on Friday before, though. No, no, wait. They used to film it on a Thursday and then release it. It's just SmackDown Live. Yes. We're live from Las Vegas. Live from Las Vegas, home of the T-Mobile Arena. <laughs> yes, the Vegas Golden Knights. Um, the soon-to-be, uh, what is it? Aren't they, aren't they getting an NFL team? Oh, yeah, Something. they're always talking about getting Something an NFL like that. team yeah. out there. You know, they're always working on it. But, of course, tonight we're hosting the second week of uh, of our new SmackDown, of course, our new set. We're here on Fox, and uh, it is the first night of this WWE draft. And it's um, they're playing it up. I'm having a lot of fun. They, you know, like the graph, you know, they have kind of have those, like, Fox Sports graphics that you see on NFL. They had tons of NFL uh, yeah. panelists throughout the episode. Reggie Bush, Matt Leiner, they had Joe Buck and Tori Aikman at one point. Like, <laughs> yeah, we had. Uh, I thought that I thought that rooms, was a lot of fun. The draft war rooms with all the Fox and USA executives. You know, they're they're, they're playing it up. If nothing yeah. else, <laughs> they like, all. I love it. Everyone there had a landline phone. You know, they, no cell phones. Oh my god! There's one guy. Papers and folders everywhere. Laptops. You know, they're all kayfabe in this thing. There's one. You know, they guy, even have the, Mark, the, Marks. The, Marks, the, you got to go back and look for this. There's one guy <laughs> with a laptop. That's just displaying the screensaver, but he's looking <laughs> at it like it's something. But it's just yeah. like a photo of a peacock and then yeah. a photo of a mountain range. And he's like, huh. And then like huh. taking notes by hand, even though his fucking computers are out. They're, they're playing it up there. Yeah. They're having fun with it. They even had that uh, the Fox football 3D robot guy. And he's interacting with people. Yeah. In the What's his name? Fuck? Cletus or something? He has a Some, name. I don't know. The Fox he has a real, football Like I've seen him on the robot. actual Sunday Night Football. Yeah, you know, he's he's like their dude, you know. He, yeah, he like walks up, he like pats people on the shoulder, gives them high fives. Around Thanksgiving, he has a pilgrim hat on. <laughs> so <laughs> I guess really? presumably it's, a, it's somebody in like a CGI like a suit. Yeah, yeah. and because it's too perfect to like not. Yeah, they couldn't just. Oh, they were. He was leaning directly on this woman. There's yeah. no way that it was perfect. Uh, but like, no yeah, way. it is. It is cool technology. I'll give him that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, but with that being said, folks, uh, <laughs> we we have a match to kick off the evening. We're getting Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins, uh, for the first pick in the WWE draft. Although we already yeah, know the, that Raw is pretty much have already know it people. has to be Raw, otherwise. <laughs> Otherwise, how would it work? The order would just be weird, yeah. So, uh, uh, okay. But anyway, so we get a match out of these two, and like we just said before, then like you know, and Seth's unfortunate time in the past couple weeks. Like, I think Roman was getting over more than Seth was in this match. 
Yeah. And I mean, this is, I mean, when you like, I don't think they've ever really had a baby face Rollins versus Reigns. Like this is potentially a pretty big matchup on paper. And uh, yeah, Reigns seemed to be, yeah, Rollins, the tide is turning on him. And it's a big part to do with this fiend feud. With this fiend feud, it's almost he's burying himself in a way. And this yeah. was a great match from Roman Reigns. He was he's been kind of been on a string of a couple good matches with the the Rowan stuff, and um, you yeah, know his see, his like, move to SmackDown was good for him. No one's complaining about Roman because he's been he's just been doing his thing. He's been chugging along. He's been he's been featured, but he hasn't been the main event. He hasn't been. Uh, yeah. And it's in matches like this where I really get to see, or I get to see myself like he is good. Roman yeah, Reigns is a, good, a, is a good worker. He can work anybody's style, it sort of seems. Yeah. He brings out his own moments. Uh, we get a couple good spots. The finish, of course. Uh, Roman Reigns goes for the spear. Um, and Seth Rollins tries to, like, duck it and give the pedigree. A bit of a weird finish, but we get the one, two, three, uh, which means that Monday uh, night... No, that's not what happened at all. That's exactly the finish. Uh, no. No. What 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 match were you watching there, Mike? <laughs> what were you watching? What were you watching? That's what I want to know. Okay, so uh, so there was like um, was that not the of, finish? No, so Seth Rollins, so like he yeah he hits a pedigree, Roman kicks out, and then he's ready to go for a curb stomp, and then the lights go out, and the fiend is here. Oh, that was the real finish. That was the, yeah, real, that was the finish. real finish. There was no one, two, three. He he rips through the ring, he pops up underneath, and he hits the mandible claw, then he pulls Seth down to the dark hole with him. And then some smoke rises up, and Seth comes popping out, and he looks all perturbed, and he's clutching his throat. So, uh, I don't know. Was that mustard gas down there or something? I don't know. <laughs> but then... <laughs> he's choking on mustard uh, gas. Well, the, well yeah. yeah. So, so we, that, we end up getting a DQ finish, I guess. That's what we're, they... Yeah, so later on, great. they tell us fucking it was officially great. a DQ win for Rollins. So, Monday night gets the first pick. The lights go out. We hear the laugh. So, yeah. No real finish. I don't know what you... I don't know what you saw. I think you, I, I think I saw that pedigree, and then I was like, "Yep, that's a match finisher." And then a bunch of shit happened at the end there, and then I was like, <laughs> "But that's, you do remember the fiend?" Right? That's not. I do now. I now that I'm <laughs> now that I'm now that I'm thinking about it. Okay, yeah. So he ripped through the ring. There was your big moment. I was focused um, on the real finish. <laughs> well, anyways, that leads us to the picks. Uh, so we're separating into two different pools. So some guys are completely ineligible. So if you wondered why, like, aren't some certain guys picked on the first night? That's why. Uh, I guess otherwise, Great. Yeah, the second. So otherwise, the really, second night would just be it's shit. It's really <laughs> weird to sell, like so, because they're, they're asking, they're asking Matt Leinart, but what was it like to be drafted? They're asking Reggie Bush was like to be drafted. They're asking Troy Aikman, hey, what was it like to be drafted first overall? Yeah, but but then they're they're doing this pool nonsense. I mean, for which the, still for doesn't the, make sense because you get down to round five and you're like, how's that guy just being yeah, picked? Yeah, I mean. Uh, I question some of the picks, regardless. I question but the last. I question everything. I no, I do not question. Everything. I do not question the first overall pick because <laughs> it was my first overall pick. Headed to Monday Night Raw, the man Becky Lynch couldn't ask for a better first pick. Um, she was already there, anyways. But uh, she has the championship. She will stay there. She will be the feature. There you go. Yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess there was a chance that uh, I guess there was a chance that she could have moved, you know, to a different brand or something. I guess there's a chance. Yeah, I guess there's a chance. Everyone. Uh, and then right after, right after that, SmackDown goes ahead and takes the big dog, Roman Reigns. So he's gonna stay on SmackDown. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's a good call. You know, I mean they they need uh, they need a top face too, and it could be it could, might as well just be him. Yeah. Uh, and then Raw goes right ahead, and they um, they get a three for one here. They get the entire OC, AJ Styles, Luke Gallows, and Carl Anderson. Yeah, I don't really so, know how that works. Yeah, I thought it was just tag team. I thought you'd have to get either just Gallows and Anderson, but I don't know. Well, so I think we do see one. later that the New Day is just suddenly, yep, they're the New Day again. Yeah, so <laughs> I guess anything, yeah, anything you want. Anything then, you fucking want. And then SmackDown's next pick was Bray Wyatt, which was another one of my top five picks mm -hmm. so i don't know like we talked about can you contain the fiend to just one show uh well i think on raw we find out that the fiend can indeed be contained which is uh we'll, we'll get to we'll get to there when uh we'll get to there when we're talking about it though because i think uh i think the fiend is not done with some of the raw superstars yes at the but, moment uh, yeah and then the last pick of round one monday night raw chose drew mcintyre so hey 
Which is great. A dude, a dude who we haven't seen on TV in like two months, who we forgot existed, uh, quote, hey. la- quote last week, um, <laughs> is suddenly a first round pick. Picked over. Yeah, first rounder. Picked over, picked over many guys like. Picked over you know, champions. You know, picked over the King of the Ring, picked over Rey Mysterio, picked over a lot of people who. Yeah, so I mean, is this Drew, yeah. is this Drew push coming? The annual, the, the annual couple until the Royal Rumble comes. I'm like, ah, no, we're not. Gonna no, that's it. the annual Braun push. Drew, I don't think Drew well, had uh, Drew. Had, Drew hasn't fit himself into a mold yet, but he's dangerously close to getting the Braun treatment. <laughs> I feel. <clears throat> yeah, we'll see. We will we'll see. Uh, and then we get King Corbin coming out to a chorus of booze. He insults the crowd, and uh, yeah, Shorty Gable. So they've they've really done it. They really went through with it. Now, a few weeks ago, we reported, or I think I reported, that Shorty G was the trademark that they uh, that they had filed. I'm glad they decided to at least keep the Gable element of it. I don't know. Maybe this is just their way, and then in it's a couple the transition. weeks, transition. Ah, uh, yeah, because I don't know. Either way, I still don't like the Shorty, but he's a good enough wrestler to overcome it. But. Yeah, they had new graphics and everything, so they're obviously committed to the shorty part. This is a hundred percent of Vince just being dumb. <laughs> so, but anyways, he's still the same Gable. He had a good match. Uh, we've seen it too many times recently, but he still still has those perfect moon salts. But uh, eventually, King Corbin hits the end of days, gets the win. So, uh, yeah, hopefully they'll be on different shows, and uh, hopefully the name Shorty Gable doesn't stick for too long. Yeah, if nothing else, you know, Vince knows now how to run something into the ground. So uh, I'm glad that this feud has taken the natural progression that most feuds do. Yeah. I mean, they each got a couple wins here and there. And uh, I mean, at the end of the day, Chad Gable was doing nothing before. So it's better than what he was doing. Yeah. And Corbin's a bit of a better wrestler now because of it. So. Yeah, Corbin's been looking good. Pretty, uh, he's been looking pretty good so far. I think we get the uh, Steph- Stephanie McMahon comes back out for the second round of the draft. Yes, round two, kicking off with a bang. One of the show's favorite people, Randy Orton, is going to run a Monday Night Raw. So that's actually a good little shakeup for the Rand Man. He hasn't been on Raw in a while. Uh, Thank you, Randy Orton. Yes, and coming to SmackDown, we have the Boss, Sasha Banks, and Michael Cole. Actually, said it's Boss time on Friday nights. So. Maybe for the last time, though. Cause Great. I'm she's glad, still a heel. I'm glad that he st- continues to <laughs> say it's boss time. Well, remember, every he hasn't time. said it since she come back, since she was being a heel. He didn't like to do it. but Oh, yeah. He did it like the first kind of couple times, yeah. and he didn't. So. Yeah. Anyways, Raw's next pick is Ricochet. Um, and then SmackDown selects Braun Strowman. So there's another one that's kind of fresh, fresh roster for him there. Yeah. And then... Uh, Final pick of the second round, Ross likes Bobby Lashley, the home wrecker. So, uh, <laughs> Bobby Lashley, the home wrecker. <laughs> yeah. That's, my, that's so, who he is. That's who he go. is. That's what he's doing right now. And then, yeah. So we already talked. They officially announced Tyson Fury versus Braun Strowman. We heard, and Brock Lesnar versus Kane Velasquez will be for the WWE Championship. Yeah, I like I like that they had a little bit of a... Like a like a like a like a proper like a conference. press conference for it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Where you know the fighters, you know, they kind of like they have that moment to like square off against each other, kind of pull their fists up. <laughs> yeah. Felt Take a little more like a combat sport. And I think if you're like clicking around channels, you see a combat sport and think to yourself, like, oh, what's this? I might stop and watch. Like I know who I know I I know both of these faces. Yeah. Are they fighting again? And then you find out that it's with WWE, and that might incentivize you to keep watching. Yeah, it's all so. it's all about those people just clicking back and forth. <laughs> I'm always you're, I'm, you're, I'm, you're on those people. I'm I don't, yeah, thinking I don't, about those people <laughs> with cable and nothing to do on a Friday. <laughs> yeah, I mean now that everyone's got a guide though, I mean clicking, you know, is it is it as popular a thing to do? Uh, well, I don't know. I don't know. We Remember I, back in the day, it was instant. Now there's like a second delay. Back when it was just like cable box, there's a. Right, now you have to press the button, then it'll come up with a little feed on the like bottom black. that says... Yeah, it'll spoil the surprise before you even get to know what show it is. That's a good point. I didn't even think, I didn't even <laughs> think about that. But anyways, um, these are 2019 things to think about. But let's get the new WWE champion, Brock Lesnar, coming out here with his little penguin, Paul Heyman. Uh, Heyman just cuts a promo talking about fear and 
what does Lesnar fear? And he talks about the the night nine years ago when he lost that title to Velasquez. And you know, Lesnar he's never he's never offered an excuse about that night. He's he's that that's the type of fighter that Velasquez is. But um, last week when he won the title in five seconds, uh, and then Mysterio comes out and makes him confront that. But um, yeah, and then he just gives his whole speech. He is, he's going to conquer his fear October thirty first. And he says, that's not a prediction. It's a... But before he could say spoiler, Rey Mysterio music interrupts. So he didn't officially say it. So the spoiler streak is in, intact. Ooh, the which, spoiler streak? I, what's this? I didn't even know this existed. Remember last time when he said... I don't know, every well, time. He, 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 he always, he always says, says that. Yeah, he always says No, but says it's always it's true. Spoiler. But it's always true when he says it's a spoiler. Wait, so... And this time, before, he didn't get to finish the thought. So meaning Brock could lose. So before WrestleMania, did Brock did, but Paul Heyman never say it's a it's a it's a spoiler. He's done it for years now. I think one of the first times it really stood out was when he said he was going to beat the Undertaker, and then that did happen. So we're like, oh shit, he's not kidding around. Shit. Okay. Well, you know, when we need uh we need we need some mark up there to really get that info for us because I <laughs> would be curious. Tracker. I would because that seems subtle enough. That good yeah. writing could be like, and the fact fuck. that they interrupted it means he didn't officially make the promise. That's what I'm saying, right? Like so that seems like that's what I'm, and that's what I'm noticing, you know. <laughs> and 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 the the, the 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 cherry on top is that Fit Finley is at the center <laughs> of that of that angle, right? Because if he yeah. didn't hit Rey Mysterio's music right when the right, right oh, at that then exact then moment, the, the whole the whole thing the whole is ruined, kiboshed. Whole thing oh. is kiboshed. Thanks, Fit. So then, yeah, so out Ray comes. He's got Kane Velasquez with him, and they show some, they go some still photos from that UFC fight. And this was actually, I like the camera work here, because they end on the shot of Brock bleeding from under his eye, and then they cut back to the live. And he's like wiping it. And he, <laughs> yeah, like the camera just like zooms hand. out on the scar. Well, even without the wipe, the cameraman, the way they zoomed, like transition. It was perfect. Because that. that scar is very prominent. You know, people might not know where he got it, but it was from that very fight. Mm -hmm. It wasn't from John Cena or someone like that. Have you ever been punched in the face so hard that your cheek was scarred? <laughs> nope, just Brock. Yeah, I fell down some stairs when I was a kid and split my head open. So. Really? Yeah, I was like two. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what, what happened? Yeah, way to go, Uncle Ralph. Way, to go, way to go, Uncle Ralph. Up. So wait, yeah. wait, where where on your head? Is it visible? Uh, and Above I've my never... one eye, bro. Yeah, if you, really, if you took a close look, you'd see it. Where, what, above Next your time. eye, you said? Above my eyebrow. Ooh, like shit. Little... Yeah, anyways... Um, so Kane says some stuff in Spanish and Ray translates for him and uh, he says he's going to give him a matching scar on the other side of his face at Crown Jewel <laughs> so there you go I think I mean Velasquez can speak English. He right? can speak fluent English. <laughs> so, I, so it's funny. Yeah. It's funny to me that that Vince that, that that they feel so uncomfortable with Kane Velasquez speaking that they had they had you know Ray Mysterio come out and speak for him like. Even if it's even if he's even if it's not a good promo, he still speaks fluent English, and yeah. is getting a championship match like pretty soon. That sort of seems like they should have the trust in him at this point to maybe talk a little bit. Yeah, um, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what they want to do. Who the hell knows? I oh, fuck. I I, <laughs> I, I, I certainly don't know. He was born in California. Like he, yeah. he he speaks perfect English. Well, it's not up to me. I guess not. I guess <laughs> not. I guess not. Do we have another round selection, or are we going straight on to? We some got tag a match action? first. We get the uh, yeah the new day versus the OC here, and uh, Michael Cole makes the point that this may be the last time we see them because the starting next week, no more wild card, okay? Except for at Crown Jewel <laughs> and stuff like that. But uh, yeah. No, uh, yeah, it was a fine match. Didn't go too long. Eventually, Kofi just hits the Trouble in Paradise on AJ for the win and uh, doesn't even address losing the WWE title. Okay. Like, we're over it. Like, we're just, over yeah, it. We're that back. six month we're back reign to where pancakes. you were looking very strong and, yeah, not even a sniff. Not even a. Nothing. Nothing. So, I don't know. Weird, That's eh? That's a little. Yeah, it's a little disappointing. It's a little disappointing. I mean, Kofi Mania is it has to be up there for sh the for sh the shooties moment of the year. Yeah, and it'll be up there. It uh, will be uh, it'll be I, I I mean, I I don't I don't have any influence over the nominations, but <laughs> I think no. we simply make our votes. But I think it'll I think that could be nominated. It's, it's a contender. I'll say that. It's much. a contender. We do have uh, uh we do move on some more uh, like in the next round, fourth round, I guess. 
third round. Third round? Here. Okay. Yes. So uh, starting off, Raw picks Alexa Bliss, and then they cut to the Fox War Room, who are pissed that they say they're tossing papers or slamming their hands. <laughs> they missed out on Alexa Bliss. Well, I mean, not so. really. Like they could <laughs> have selected. They could have, of course. Um, <laughs> But uh, just like Raw could have. But uh, SmackDown picks Lacey Evans. So big pick. Big pick there. Uh, Raw counters with Kevin Owens. SmackDown picks The Revival. Who I think are the tag champs. Can't yes, right they now. are. Yeah. <laughs> and then the I think, final I think pick we, the... we had to look this up last, yeah, last like, mid-show. Like, oh my God, who's the <laughs> fucking champion? And the final pick of the third round, Raw selects Natalia. So her and Lacey are split up for now. Yeah, and then uh, they just jump. Yeah, they just they go to commercial and they jump right back into the fourth and final round of the night. So uh, Raw picks the Viking Raiders. SmackDown chooses Lucha House Party for some reason. <laughs> wow. Bad yeah, that, that's that's weird for SmackDown to be like pissed off. They mix on Alexa Bliss, and then next round they're like, <laughs> you know what? That Lucha House Party sounds like they could be a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay, and then this next pick is where I start to question things because Raw picks Nikki Cross. And they also picked Alexa Bliss in that last round when you could have had them both together. Now that seems Clearly. like it seems like if 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 you're allowed to take the OC as a three man thing, or if you're allowed to take yeah. the New Day as a three, or the Lucha House Party, why wouldn't you just do that, right? Yeah, Bliss Cross, you could have easily like they they made the point that you can split people up if you want to, but then you end up picking both anyways, so you just completely wasted a pick. But. Um, so at least they're on the same show though because <laughs> yeah I didn't want to be split up but whatever I didn't want to have to watch two shows to see Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross <laughs> oh that's too much yeah but then uh, Smackdown chooses Heavy Machinery and then with the final pick of the night Ross selects the Street Profits so it's official they're finally called up even though they've been here for a while but now we can finally start seeing them wrestle on the main roster so that should help out the tag vision a little bit uh, it definitely should I mean, um, yeah, you know, or at least hopefully maybe try to get rid of those some of those hodgepodge tag teams together because, uh, you know, because ac- across the brand, as it were, or across the brands, across shows, yeah, across the shows, as it were, <laughs> we seem to have a lot of teams with a lot of history, um, which can only which can only yield good results, right? Hopefully. Right. I mean, Jurassic Express is AEW's like most thrown together team, and it still yeah. kind of makes sense. <laughs> and everyone loves them. And everyone loves them. Like, even, yeah, you know, yeah. that would be. And they lose every match, and everyone still loves that's like, them. That's like, that's like if somehow this Dolph Ziggler, Bobby Roode thing somehow got over so incredibly <laughs> that WWE well, had no choice and then like fucking yeah. throw them up top. <laughs> but it did. But not the case, yeah. But let's get on to the main event the here. The main event, finally. Yes, this is a good one here. We got Charlotte Flair versus Bailey. Been for waiting the SmackDown. all night for this one. Charlotte Flair, you know, she's draped in blue, as it were. Yeah, I was going to say her, draped in white, the... but I realized that was going that was that was problematic. Uh, so she's draped in blue. <laughs> she's got her title with her. That ten-time champion. Ten-time now. champ. She's going to beat her dad before the fucking year is over. At this rate, at this rate, post WrestleMania, yeah. she's looking at seventeen. Or no, we're gonna say eighteen. We're gonna one do one better <laughs> than that guy who thought seventeen. Yeah, the graphic, the graphic fuck up. fucking fuck up guy, whoever that is. I think have we yeah. said before on the Shoot Brothers Wrestling Podcast who's responsible for the video content? Uh, I think we might have assigned. I think we may have that. assigned that a, a role. Okay, okay, <laughs> go back, go back, and we'll uh, we'll fi- we'll find out who it was. Yeah, maybe it's but an all-in-one. Fitz thing is like an all-in-one. He's just boop, and then anyways, he's multi. Anyways, then we get the big. We get the, we get Bailey's music hits. We hear the regular music. The Bailey buddies are out, but she comes up. Something's different though. She's got a hoodie on. She uh, never wears hoodies. Yeah, she never wears hoodies. So something you're like, uh, and she's not smiling or anything. So she stops. She zips it. She takes off the hoodie and she reveals a new hairstyle. She has chopped off that side ponytail and dyed her hair black and she looks much more serious no smiles no hugs from her here um and then she goes and she picks up this giant uh i don't know what was it's it like a pickaxe it was like a pickaxe that's what i'm pretty sure <laughs> yeah, it was, it was like <laughs> it was like a, a wooden handle with these big metal pokers on the end yeah uh so then she starts just stabbing the inflatable bailey buddies and deflating them and destroying them tossing away the old gimmick once and for all and uh, there was one great the way the like, the green buddy just like deflated and fell on top of her and to the it was like no just clutching <laughs> clutching for dear life but um, I love it 
So we were kind of like halfway heal. Now Bailey, this is full on heal Bailey. Now this is the heal turn. I think we. This I is, think we all wanted yeah. whenever, however, a month ago or something, whatever it was. Uh, yeah, like she st before. Yeah, she started acting bad, but she was still being smiling and hugging and, and dancing. And, and did you see in the front, like in the front row on the ramp, was this some Bailey fans? Oh, with 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 the whole thing. She like she had like a poster which was the <laughs> like the thing hugging itself. Yeah, it was just well, I so saw. Great to see. Did I, have you I, seen the? Just fucking videos of people like filming their kids. Yeah, crying, crying to this shit. <laughs> this is exactly what I wanted. And Mike, I brought this up with the show not too long ago. Is it difficult? Is it difficult to turn, you know, commercially successful female superstars because you do risk that making six-year-old girls cry? Yeah, and I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Make the I'm kids all cry. For it. I mean, we've been making six-year-old boys cry for fucking years now. <laughs> yeah. So. This was awesome. Um, I love it. Uh, I saw some clips of her at like a house show too with the new gimmick, and she like took took some signs and ripped it in half and Good. shit. So she, she ain't fucking around. So full heel Bailey, onto the match. Um, yeah, Charlotte. She stole Lacey Evans' spot from last week and did a moonsault off the barricade. Uh, and then Bailey hits a Bailey to belly out of nowhere, but Charlotte kicks out at two. And then Bailey hits these big running knees. Uh, she goes for the big elbow drop, but Charlotte kicks out at two of that. So she's Kicking out of everything. Bailey starts throwing a tantrum. Charlotte runs up and hits the natural selection. But when she goes for the cover, Bailey rolls her up out of nowhere and gets the three count. So new champion. New uh, champ. Two-time champ, I think, now. Uh, Maybe. And we are officially one step closer to Charlotte being an 11-time champion. <sighs> the, yeah, but. that's the, the best part about Charlotte Flair <laughs> losing is that she can only win it again. She can only yeah, pad her but, stats. Uh, um, this, yeah, what what a great what a great ending to the night. I think uh, you know the heel turn yeah. Bailey, the new champion, and what have I said before? You need to put somebody over. You need a guaranteed good match. Who do you put in this it? This was great. Charlotte Flair. This was just like <laughs> the perfect time. This was the perfect time. She can make yeah. It was a good main event. Fucking uh, spotlight on love the new your look. company's big on on a huge faces heel turn night. You know, the yeah. draft. It, it, it was a big night, main event, like all things considered, right? And yeah, uh, yeah, they gave uh, they and gave this match them did not spot. disappoint. Uh, did you notice that she had new music as well after the match? Like they played a different theme song. It was much much heavier. Had like guitar and shit. And for Bailey, I don't I don't think I did yeah. notice. Yeah, I think next time she'll you'll hear it for the full entrance. But um, yeah, so Bailey. Then after the match, she gets on the mic and she says, "Hey, bitches." Screw all of you. Wow. So everyone's like, whoa. Whoa, She called, the little, kids, she called little kids bitches. bitches. Yeah, call them, yeah. again, six-year-old girls. So this is awesome. Bitches. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I don't give a fuck about the little Bailey thing. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about you huggers. Do you know, uh, do you remember Bailey super fan Izzy? The one that was always in the front row at all the NXT shows? No, no. I've never, I've never heard of this person. Just I, I'm Like a child? Yeah, she was like. She was like a real child, but like they would integrate her in the storyline almost because she'd always be there like, hey, it's Izzy, blah, blah, blah. Really? And then one <laughs> time Sasha made her cry. She like took her bow off her head and like smacked it on the ground. That's sick. Anyways, this Bailey super fan tweeted out after the match. She's like, hey, Bailey, I'm proud of you. I'm going to follow you on your journey. So, oh, not boo. Everyone. <laughs> boo, you should hate her. But she's like 14 now. She's grown up. Yeah, she, she should she... be smart enough to know to hate her. Like, <laughs> No, she's smart enough to know that heels are awesome. Most of the time. <laughs> <of> the time. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, there so, you have it, folks, right? That was the show. I think the show kind of ended right there. Yeah, so a good, good closing angle. He'll turn Bailey. And then uh, in between SmackDown and Raw, there were some supplemental picks that didn't get to make air. So Yeah, w this one was a bit weird. You know, I think maybe they could have, they could not have fit in a last, you know. They, they do this every time, I think, sometimes with the, so you got uh, Apollo Crews goes to SmackDown, EC3 goes to Raw. Uh, SmackDown gets Drew Gulak, Heath Slater, Tamina, and the B team, and then Raw gets Eric Young and Sin Cara. So uh, you can see Eric why those Young, who w w wait, 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 what? Eric Young got picked to Raw, and then we see him on Raw this Monday, right? Wasn't wait, wasn't he just on NXT UK? Isn't he in that? That's the other oh, guy. Oh, that's the that's, other uh, guy. Um, yeah, uh, the other sanity guy. I forget, fuck, what, what is remember it, uh, them? Wolf? Dude, yeah. remember how over Sanity was with Nikki well, Cross? 
yeah. Well, Killian Dane still kind of. He's still yeah. He's he looks like Dean Ambrose and he's in NXT right now. Yeah. Right? That's what it is. Yeah. So he's still kind of over. Nikki Cross is still over. Yeah. But Eric Young is just. Right. And then, but yeah, the other the other guy's in Imperium now, so he's got a good Imperium, spot. Imperium, that's what it is. Yeah, with Walter, they're they're like the top group over in the UK. And there you but, have it. Uh, and that was the so they, that was that last round that of that little draft and uh, all of SmackDown Live. Yeah, that's that's part one of the draft. Part one of the draft. Uh, uh, folks, we're going to take a little break. And when we return, I guess we're going to probably hit up part two of the draft. We got trivia. Yeah, we got Wrestler we got of the Week. Yes. All the and stuff that's... that we love to do. So uh, you folks at home, um, stick around. Let's shoot. Yeah, let's shoot. Yeah, let's shoot. Butter, butter, yeah. But between the break there, I saw that right now on AEW Dark is Joey Janela and Kenny Omega. So, uh, and isn't it some sort of gimmick match? I heard if it's a Crackle Barrel match, even it's better. not a Crackle Barrel match. But I think it might be like an unsanctioned or some 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 sort. Oh my God! There may be blood. There may be blood. May I'll blame me blood. Oh. TV fourteen. P- uh, TV fourteen there on that TNT, folks. Yeah. Folks, the, t- Folks. the TNT, Dynamite, baby. I just Forks. put that together. I just put... Dude, I've been saying that for weeks. No, no, I, but no, but I, like the ACDC thing. Yeah, I said Jesus that should have been their theme Christ, song. I just put that together. I said it should have been their oh theme. Oh, my God. I probably, well, you know, if, I mean, if SmackDown got an ACDC song, I guess AEW yeah. also would have to get an ACDC song. Folks. Yeah, because, uh, but SmackDown has Brian Johnson and Dynamite would have had Bon Scott. Oh, it would have been, so, a, it know, been a whole different. totally different royalty family. Yeah. You know, and I'm sure there was... Watch me explode! I'm sure there was different drummers and bass players. Really, that band was kind of three guys for a Three band. guys, <laughs> but... Well, that, that's the amazing... They're one of the most successful singer replacements. Like, oh, he right, just came right in came right and knocked it out of the, the bat, park. Right off the bat. With their with biggest the, album. One of the biggest albums of all time. It's pretty um, tough. I can't think of another situation where... I mean, you know, or even... Because it's like a whole new band. Like there's other bands that have like been successful, but that is like yeah. That's that's that's. Uh, that's uh, bon Scott though, he's a lot harder to do an impression of. He doesn't. He's not as shrill. He's not as. <laughs> yeah, it's easier to voice. be shrill. He's a little. He's, more, he's a little <laughs> chiller. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, you I've know, never I, tried that before. Yeah, I think you, I think you could put that down on I the list I of could. impressions. If I, you know, if I if I work on it a bit, maybe. If you work, if you work on it, it, could be good. All right, let's reel it, reel it in, folks. Here. Let's get in some trivia. Trivia. Woo. Trivia. Woo. Yes, it's trivia We're, time. We, one one day we will deliver that music episode, though, and we'll. We can go all off the rails with band talk and shit. We like could that. band talk, band talk. Um, okay, Mike. Uh, Trivia. This week for you, I have four questions for you. All right, I've got three. So mm. let's do the sandwich. Let's do the old sandwich. The double Big Mac. The double Big Mac. Um, Mike. So this is uh, this quiz. This this week's trivia topic is Who Am I? Post Draft Edition. So I'm going to give you three clues. <laughs> You're going to have to guess okay. who the wrestler is. Here's the trick. It's somebody who moved brands, because I don't know if you oh. I don't know if you paid attention in this fucking draft. Not many people left, but uh, but and, and when I say change brand, I know the wild card rule is in effect. But but <laughs> yeah. I picked people who were like, you know, ninety nine percent for the most part, besides maybe a one off match was associated yeah. with one brand and is now moved. Okay. Okay. Yes. I think you're gonna get this. So we're gonna start off. We're gonna start off uh, super simple. Who am I? Uh, I was the youngest world champion ever. I've won tag belts with two different people. Yeah. And I, I love like Twitter. Yeah, <laughs> it's Randy Orton. It's the Rand Man, Randy Orton. SmackDown oh. since SmackDown's inception, or like in this new iteration of it. Uh, I moved yeah. over to Raw. Yeah, he's been he has been one of the few uh, pretty exclusive to the brand. So. Even even AJ be, swapped over fun. like you know a little while ago, and that, yeah. and that was literally his house. Yeah, um, yeah, he built that. He shit. He built but... that shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Anyways, all right, okay, we're going geographical this week for my trivia questions, but not not maybe in the way you're thinking. Not not in the the regards to what's going on in China, Hong Kong. This is not that kind of show. Not that kind of show. I mean, it could be, but nope. Anyways, geography. 
you got to know at least a little bit about your geography because um, starting off here, I want you to name three wrestling moves which have a country inspired in their name. You know, so named after a country. Three wrestling moves <laughs> Ooh, named after. A country. Okay. Uh, well, of course, the Canadian Destroyer. Bam. That's one. Um, I'm not going to include our variation of it, where uh, I think we met in the middle somewhere. We called it like a Mexican Destroyer. <laughs> um, yeah. No. Now, okay, this is where it might get tricky because that's the one I know. Uh, <laughs> now, what's the fucking, what's Adam Cole's finisher? Is it, uh, fuck, what's it called? Like, it's called, like, the, uh, it sounds going to sound really dumb if I say it and it's wrong. <laughs> is it, it's the Panama something, right? That is. Panama. It's uh, fuck. I want to say like Panama this. Sunrise, but that's totally not what it is. That is what, what? it is. Oh I'm God. just gonna lay out. And Panama is a country, so you've got two. Um, I know you can get a third one, even if you can't. I know you can. <sighs> the third one. I have multiple here, but there's one that you'll kick yourself if you don't. There's say. one. Oh, okay. So there's more than three, but you want me to get. Th- yeah, I've got get- like seven here. Oh shit. But okay. So uh, you want me to get uh, at least three. I only want three. If you can do more than three, that's bonus. Okay. But three is I feel. A good threshold. Okay, well, let's kind of cycle through some countries, see if it sounds good. Like the Scottish blah, or the British blah, <laughs> or the, you know, the the something. Yeah, fuck. You know what? Nothing really comes to mind right now. I'm kind of going through other. So you've said. And, oh, um, um, oh, shit, 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 shit. Like an Alabama slam? That's not a country. Damn it. Okay, I wasn't sure if maybe, uh, you know. If I'm smart enough to know that, we were accepting regional. You know, if it had to be <laughs> no, but but but, but keep that in mind. It may come into play later. Okay, we are doing geography. Okay, we are doing geography. Bit. Okay, so okay. Keep it, but countries. You've given me German. I mean, I I just fucked up one of the answers. German. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say the Berlin <laughs> Wall. <laughs> uh, no, I'm done. I'm done. I got those two, and that's it. You don't want to say the German suplex? Oh, fuck off. Oh, my God. I wasn't even thinking. Oh. I know. Sometimes it's hard to, oh, yeah, to no, overthink. Yeah, like you were, when I, I was f- overthinking, yeah. Let me give you a couple others. The The Russian leg sweep is a move. Okay. Um, Indian death lock. Okay. The Irish whip. The Irish Very whip. Con- ah, I should have yes. gotten that. Uh, a Samoan drop. Yeah. Uh, Spanish fly and the uh, Mexican surfboard. I'm sure there's others, but those I've never heard of the thing. Mexican surfboard. That's the one I'm sure you've seen it where like they they like lock them by their arms and legs and like lift them up and they're like stretching their back. Oh, uh, OK. Yeah. It's hard to describe. Yeah. Yeah. I know what you're saying. Yeah. Saying. Anyways, there you go. OK. Hit me. Uh, hit ya. Here we go. I've never won a title in a company. Hmm. Uh, I made my debut at the Royal Rumble. And I've had three title shots. Uh, you've never won a title in the company. Never won. That, never never won a title in the company. That includes NXT. Yes. Okay. Debuted at the Rumble, and has had three title shots. Does that mean any title, or a world title? Uh, you want to say which I, I, world title? I'm not. I'm not going to be specific. I'm just going to say okay. title. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, three title shots. Never won any title in Royal Rumble. Hmm. Um, I'm gonna say Humberto Carrillo. Ooh, what I was going for today, what I was going for was Lacey Evans. Ah. Uh, so yeah, she she kind of fast tracked her way up here. Um, we saw her for a few months leading up to the Rumble, but as we remember, she was the first uh, entrant. Yes, number one. She's had Great her uh, three title shots here: Money in the Bank, Stomping Grounds, and Extreme Rules. All of this year against Becky Lynch, and of course, uh, she was on Raw, and now she's on the Blue Brand. Yes, very good. There you go. Yes. There you go. My girl. My girl. My girl. My girl. <laughs> All right, question number two. We're keeping in the geography theme. Okay. But this time, you only got to give me two answers. And if you can remember that other one, it might come into play. So I'm looking for two wrestling moves Two wrestling moves named after a city or state. Okay, so I'm going to say Alabama Slam. There's one. <laughs> uh, gooey. 
Um, and the second one, a city or state. So yeah. I'm going to say that was the state, so the next one has to be city. Uh, uh, there could be both. Yeah, but that's, that's, just, another that's one. just what I'm guessing. That's just what I'm guessing. Whatever helps That's what I'm guessing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Okay. A state, though. Yeah, state, city. I don't know. That's a fucking... Uh, oh, a Boston crab. There you go. Hey. Well, that's, that's two. If you can think of any more, you can go ahead. If I can think of any more. But you've already got the threshold. And uh, states and cities, of course, cities worldwide. Worldwide. Okay, worldwide. Um, uh, there's you know, like a London something. No. The. Uh, nah, I think that's it. I think I just got those two. All right. There's also uh, the Oklahoma Slam. Okay. The Kinshasa. It's just a city on its own. Oh, no way. Yeah, Texas Cloverleaf, um, and then the Death Valley Driver, named after Death Valley. Death Valley. I should have thought of that. Yeah, a real place. <coughs> a real place. All right. Yes. Um, well, yeah. That's where they built Undertaker from, but I don't think it's actually from there. They're just like, but it has death in the name. But it's got death. It's like they're not going to say hell or something. That's <laughs> he's from hell. <laughs> yeah. it's like he's, he could be a dead man, but he needs to be a real location. He needs, yeah, you know? if, he, if he's going to be the dead man, <laughs> he's got to be a real dead man. <laughs> None exactly. of this fake dead man stuff. That's too much. Yeah. Uh, question number three for you, Mike. Who am I? I'm a Money in the Bank winner. I am. Uh, former U.S. champ. Hey. In 2008, I won the WWE year-end award for most hated. All right. I'm going to go with The Miz. Uh, nope. No. I was looking for our king, Baron Corbin. Uh, Wait, in 2008? Sorry, 2018. Ah, oh, my bad. Oh, my bad. My, bad. my bad. My bad. You know, I read it that wrong. Completely. Right. Okay. Yes. That was my bad. I'm that, sorry. I'm sorry. That I'm completely. Sorry. That completely. That completely would have changed it. You're right. I apologize. Because yeah. 10 years. Okay. Anyways, throw that. Uh, give me give me three points for that just because you. No, no way. <laughs> no way. That's a null point. Okay. That's a null right. point. My bad. Anyways, my, 2018. My... My year end award most hated Baron Corbin. Okay. Uh, he was on Raw and I was on SmackDown. Yeah, King Corbin. He could win that most hated again. He could. Who knows? If we have a if we have that on our show, he could Wait, win. Wait, what if Seth shooty. keeps this up, honestly? Ah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My final question. We've done countries, we've done cities and states. Now I just want you to name one wrestling move named after a continent. A continent. Oh, my God. Yes. I've worked my way down. You started with three. <laughs> yeah. I was very organized in this. Okay, so what are the continents? We got, uh, oh, my God. We got Africa. I could only. We got uh, Australia. An Australian something or other. Or a South American something or other. Like, it has to be. It's named after the continent itself. It's following the theme we've been going with. You know, the continent is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, it's in the name somehow or another. Hmm. This one's tough. This one's tough. No, this fucking... I only have one answer for there's this only, one. There's only that one That I know answer. of. Okay, there could okay, be okay. more that exists. Yeah, there could be. But the, 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 I know for sure there's at least one. So, <laughs> Out of the seven continents or however many there are. Okay. You know what? I got nothing. The European uppercut. The European uppercut, Mike. Okay, Swiss, tell me. Tell me. Cesaro. Is that Cesaro what, does them all the time. Is that what he does when he throws you up and then? Uh... I mean, that's the super uppercut. But when he just does it on the ground, you know how like you know how like, he hit, he's actually like hitting you with the inside of his elbow, kind of weird way. I don't know. He's never but, on TV. Anyway, I don't know. I haven't seen him. That's true. <laughs> Anyways, they years. call it the European uppercut. He's not the only one to do it. But uh, that is an actual thing, so there you go. Well, shit. Well, there you go. There you go. There you have it. Yes. Uh, some geography today, folks. For me. Anyways. Anyways let's that, close no, it that, out. That was a great uh, that was a great theme. A couple of nice... I themed it, yes. I had theme. a theme going on. Yeah. Uh, okay, Mike, your final question from me. Who am I? I made my main roster debut on Raw. I was in a faction known as the Mount Rushmore of Wrestling... In another company. <laughs> and I just need a tag championship to secure my Grand Slam. Uh, 
AJ Styles. AJ Styles is close, but no, we were looking for Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens, of course, made his main oh. roster debut, uh, yeah. uh, accepting John Cena's U.S. title uh, championship. Yeah, uh, I forgot that he never. For some reason, I thought him and Jericho had the tag titles, but they never. They did. never did. He just he just yeah. needs that one though for his Jericho, Grand Slam, yeah. and of course the uh, the Mount Rushmore of wrestling. Buy the shirts on Pro Wrestling Tees. That was uh, <laughs> that was him, Adam Cole, and the Young Bucks. That was the four of them. Hmm. Well, all right. Imagine that. Imagine those four in a thing. Oh, my God. They have some great promos. <laughs> know, you know. Well, there you have it, folks. Yeah. Who am I post-draft edition? All those dudes. Of course, he went from SmackDown to Raw and uh, everything else. Good week. Good week for trivias. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Fun, fun, yeah, as been, always. It's been a little while. Folks, yes. um, now that we're all loosened up after this trivia, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I think it's about time that we get to um, the real, the real party, the real party of the week, the real, the real thing that we're all here for, the thing that I loved every second of. No, 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 not kidding. Monday Night Raw. Let's get raw. <laughs> Monday Night Raw. Of course, this is, uh, what, Draft Night 2? So yeah, you, live uh, from Denver, Colorado. Using that second pool. Remember, folks, there are pools. Yeah. So the... that's why, you know, that's, wh- that's why, in case you were wondering, like Apollo Crews got drafted before Brock Lesnar. Yes, that's just exactly. wh- That's why. There is a reason for this, right? Yeah. Um, but again, we have to have uh, we're having another match so we can determine who gets the number one pick, of course. But uh, this week we're gonna have Becky Lynch and the one person you put in a match when you need it to be a good match. Well, unfortunately, that person couldn't wrestle. It was supposed to be Sasha Banks. But she, <laughs> you get Charlotte uh, Flair, of yeah. course. And again, <laughs> we're going to this match thinking Sasha is legitimately injured though, we're, due to uh, those bumps she took in Hell in a Cell. So who knows the the status on Sasha? Banks. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. But of course, like we had the match, what the, like the week prior, we know yeah. how it has to end. <laughs> it pretty much, yeah, needs to be Raw winning to keep the, because the flow. it's like a two and three. It, it, I don't know. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So yeah, these two slug it out. Uh, yeah, we get a good quality match. Nothing too out of the box from from what we've seen from them. But uh, yeah, eventually Becky goes for a big diving forearm. Charlotte avoids it, hits the natural selection, but Becky kicks at it too. Charlotte hits a big boot and a spear, but Becky kicks out of both of those. So crowd's getting really hot for that. And then Charlotte just starts freaking out because she can't believe it. She thought she has the match won. And then Becky capitalizes and just cradles her, rolls her up for the three count. So once again, Raw will pick first, as we all expected. You know what? And these two put on another good match. So there you have it. Yeah, yeah, you can't go wrong. These two, they'll always they're they're like the new Rock and Austin of the women's division. They'll always kind of be there. They'll always have that history, and they'll always be top dogs. Top dogs. Um, yeah. What, do, we get, do we go straight into? Uh... There was a quick little backstage thing with Rollins, and he's like, "I'm going fiend hunting." So. Oh my but, god. Yeah, so he, he vows. Before the end of the night, he will find Bray Wyatt and burn it down. I sure as fuck hope he doesn't. So, I sure yes, as fuck hope he doesn't. The, the, the killing of Seth Rollins is taking place on. Like, who's yeah, doing anyways. this? Who's burying Seth? I don't know. I don't know. We get the, we get we get, the first yeah. round. Yeah, the first round. Uh, and, of course, we have to get those big championships out of the way. So, Raw selects the universal champion, Seth Rollins. SmackDown gets Brock Lesnar. So, the obvious ones are there. Then Raw picks Charlotte Flair, so uh, her and Becky may not be done yet. We'll see. Well, I mean, there's only one title for her to win, right? Like, uh, and like, unless and like, they tag up. If she, if she has to get seven championships before April, so uh, <laughs> yeah. we got we got to fast track we'll see. this. Uh, we'll see. But, uh, and then SmackDown gets the New Day, so the three for one combo. And then Raw selects Andrade, who comes with uh, Zelina Vega. She's the Happy Meal toy, so that's a two for one there. And then, yeah, they come out right away, Andrade and Vega, and then Zelina cuts a promo. She calls the four horsewomen the four horse faces. Woo! So where, what, what did they do to her? What? <laughs> so I don't know. And then she just puts over Andrade for being drafted in the same round as the Universal and WWE Champion, which is, yeah. Yeah, he got that Drew McIntyre rub that first round. That's nice. So <laughs> it's nice to get a Drew McIntyre rub. <laughs> and uh, he's here for a match, Andrade versus Ali. 
Selena Vega's there on the outside being a shyster, trying to interfere. Um, so at one point, Ali's going for a suicide dive, but Vega jumps on the apron to block him. But he says, fuck it, and he just jumps and does a flip over top of her, lands on Andrade on the floor. Great spot. Um, but then after, right away, behind the ref's back, Selena hits Ali with a Hurricane Rana. Uh, so that allows Andrade to throw him in the ring, hit the Hammerlock DDT to get the win. Um, yeah, it's Ali. I forget. Is he already drafted at this point? I don't know. Maybe not. Uh, I guess I'm not sure. Maybe in the I'm next sure. round. Yeah. yeah, we'll get to him. Uh, are, uh, so are we getting an Andrade push? Is that what this, uh, is that what this means? Maybe I don't know. First At round, like like you mean, if the if the picks are completely arbitrary, they have to be placed based on kind of like val like importance to a storyline. You know, Andrade. Yeah, you know, I don't know. He's got a mm. he's got to start a storyline. I guess we'll see. You know, and uh, Zelina Vega called his girlfriend a horse face right in front of him. I don't know. Charlotte's part of the four horse ah, Well, I mean that. I'm sure, I, I <laughs> uh, guarantee that was written. <laughs> yeah. I can almost guarantee that was written. Uh, and then we get Stephanie coming back out for the next round of the draft. Raw starts off with the Kabuki Warriors, but the the commentary clarifies that the women's tag titles will still be defended on both shows. So if Kabuki Warriors lose them, they remain exclusive to Raw, but the titles go wherever. So that clears that up. Interesting. Yeah. And then SmackDown picks Daniel Bryan. I would have had him in the first round, <laughs> but uh, and they cut to the war room. They're pissed. They missed out on Bryan. Should have picked him earlier, you idiots. But yeah. And then Raw picks the cuck himself, Rusev. Uh, and then SmackDown gets the new and improved Bailey. And then Raw closes out the round with Aleister Black. So some big names in that round. Aleister Black? Uh, in, in yeah, this, Aleister in, Black's going to Raw. In the, second, in the second round of something arbitrary. Wow. Yeah, hopefully. Rusev in that second round? See, there's some pretty That's big weird. names. Rusev picked before Black. Why? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, and then we get a tag title match. Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler defending against the Viking Raiders. Um, yeah, so the Vikings, they're just coming out, flying out of the gate, uh, hitting their big offense. But Ziggler hits a zigzag on the outside onto some chairs. That looked kind of painful. I forget who it was, but... One of them. Uh, one of them. One Eventually, of them. Ivar comes in. He gets the hot tag. He's running wild. Everyone's going crazy. But Ziggler interferes, and they hit the, their combo, but they... Yeah, super kick into a glorious DDT, but Ivar breaks it up, and then he hits a springboard double elbow, takes them both out, and then eventually they tag in, get the Viking experience for the three count to become the new Rock Tag champions. New champions. And uh, Yeah, it was a good match, but by the end of it, the crowd was really hot, really hot for the Vikings to see him win, so I guess hopefully this will continue their push, and we can elevate these Raw Tag titles a bit. It is it it is funny to see. I feel like we haven't seen a tag champ or tag champs in a while who, like, were they did build up. Like it wasn't yeah, too like long they worked ago. Away. Yeah, <laughs> it took a little longer than we wanted, but yeah, they did work. It's like their way everybody up the who has been winning has just been yeah. It's been like that New Day revival, Usos, OC, and before OC, and before that the Bar was in there before yeah. uh, the Usos. Although so we haven't, yeah, the Usos kind of been missing. For forgot a while. they I don't existed. Know they... Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, they maybe they got another DUI on the way to the yeah, arena. I don't know. Probably, uh, <laughs> unfortunately. But uh, yeah, and then uh, yeah, we get some more of the sports panels talking. We had like the NHL and NBC crew who compared Seth Rollins to Connor McDavid. <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, Certainly not on Twitter. Yeah. Next round. Next round of the draft here. Raw picks Cedric Alexander, and SmackDown selects Nakamura. And then Sami Zayn was just kind of shown in the background with him, so I guess he's thrown in the package. Yeah, he's he's they, the man. He's the manager. He's name, the manager. Yeah, you know? but yeah, it was just funny. He was just like peeking over his shoulder. So, uh, and then Raw picks Umberto Carrillo, which is very surprising. Like this high in the draft. Yeah, that's like on uh, top of you know, uh, like in front of Rey Mysterio. Yeah, Think about Rey that. Mysterio, like, uh, Buddy Murphy, all these other guys. So. And then, oh yeah, this is when SmackDown picks Ali, so he's gonna stay there. And then to close it out, uh, Ross picks Eric Rowan. So, yeah, I guess that freshens things up for him. New roster, no more Daniel Bryan and uh, Roman Reigns to mess around with. Yeah, well, he's gonna have to. But, he's gonna have to find it on his own, you know. Yeah, and they didn't pick. I don't know why they didn't pick Harper. Why wouldn't you just pick one. both of them? Could have got the free tag team. Yeah, I don't get so. it. Oh well, and then we get uh, the fresh Raw superstar, Alistair Black, taking on Eric Young. So, Eric Young is one of the ones. Yeah, we were told he was signed over the weekend. 
he was a free agent, and then uh, I guess they signed him. So, oh, okay. Uh, oh, SmackDown he, signed him. Is that, what, is that is that what you gathered? Raw signed him. Yeah. Oh. Fuck. Anyways, Who knows? it doesn't matter because he got his ass kicked real <laughs> quick. Alistair Black does his new submission again, which they've now called the Dark Ritual. That a little behind the arm thing he does. Yeah, or whatever. I, I, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, it's yeah, weird yeah, name cool. for it. Yeah, I like the the black hole better. Well, we haven't seen the black mass in a long time. That's just what I'm thinking. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, maybe they're saving it. Yeah. I don't know. It's weird, eh? Anyways, next round, uh, the pick that should have been the previous round. Raw picks Buddy Murphy. So yeah, I would have swapped him with Humberto Carrillo, but no big deal. Um, and then SmackDown picks the the losers of the night: Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler. And then Raw. Wait, they were chosen as a package? Yeah. That's Rudy weird. Ziggler. So now they have so. to be a team? Is that what that means? I mean, I'm sure they could split up if they wanted to. Oh, <laughs> you can't force them. But no, but that, I mean, like any team that has wrestled as a team in the last like week or two, I think you could have picked. So I don't, I don't. Okay. okay Anyways, I get it. Another, another wasted pick. Raw picks Jinder Mahal. So, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. And then SmackDown. SmackDown picks Carmella. And then, of course, next Raw picks 24 Stampy and R-Truth. So the crowd's like, oh, no, it's very sad. See, I feel like Carmella and Truth. SmackDown should have taken both of them. Why not? Uh, and the, see, the, that one's harder to say if they're a package. I mean, they could have. Who knows? The photo could have been like, you know, when if, she's like on, like, yeah. when she's like running away together. <laughs> if you have a photo of the two of them, yeah, that's all that matters. <laughs> yeah, it's all the middle of that. Sammy the and, the... and then a little nickname tagline. That's all you needed to get on the same team. Yeah, but uh, so they're split, but the 24 7 title is still defended on both shows. It'll move uh, on. Yeah, the USA War Room, they were very happy. They were all celebrating, high five, and <laughs> they were glad. One of the fucking marks in there was wearing Ultimate Warrior face paint. Uh, really? <laughs> I didn't yeah. notice that. Very unprofessional. You know, you wouldn't see that at any other professional at a, sports at a draft. workplace. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways, we get a match uh, Ricochet versus Shelton Benjamin. Uh, yeah, just a quick little good back and forth. Both these guys, high flyers. Shelton Benjamin goes for a T-bone suplex off the top rope, but Ricochet lands on his feet and hits the recoil for the pin. So, yeah, just a good strong win for him. The recoil. And that's then, his move. That's the, yeah. Uh, Jericho stole it. But still, it but I mean, I mean, I mean, like, I mean, <laughs> I know, like, Jinder was drafted before literally the guy who won the King of the Ring tournament. Yeah, like, how- and Legends, and yeah. But anyways. The Miz? Remember The Miz? Yeah. He's so. He remember how cool he was. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> then we go to this uh, massage parlor that allows you to film inside. So, so. Yeah, yeah. The only massage parlor in the world that lets you fucking bring an HD camera crew. <laughs> yeah. So Lon is in there. She's getting a nice massage from this woman, and uh, she's asks if she's applying enough pressure. But Lon is like, no. She wants it harder. She wants it deeper. Uh, and that's the cue for Bobby Lashley to come strolling in, and he's he's smiling. He's got he's ready to massage her, and Lana's like, "Yeah, Rusev was never that good." Uh, and then she says, "Enough on this side. How about I flip over?" And then Lashley just lifts the towel up, and he can see what's underneath, and he's looking down, smiling. She turns face up, so they are pushing the envelope. Oh my god! I saw some. I, I think I saw some trim here. I saw some. That towel. Um, What's happening? What what is what is happening? This has gone further than my fire and desire storylines. Oh my god, uh, Mike! I wish there was a fire and desire storyline <laughs> going on right now. That I could at least. That would at least have some some to some it, right? something to it. Oh my god! <laughs> like if I feel so based, weird, wa- like I feel weird watching this. I feel like Vince McMahon just discovered Urban Dictionary or something, and he looking. The word blacked pop up. And he's like, blacked. <laughs> God damn it. That's hilarious. <laughs> so now this is the storyline. Oh, my. I just, like, I feel so bad for <laughs> all three of them. Yeah. I mean, honest. Lashley can't be enjoying this at any part. Bobby Lashley cannot be. And surely the <laughs> other two are not enjoying this. I feel so. Weird. Yeah. I don't know. It's. Uh, yeah. just, there's nothing, just keep moving I don't, there's no payoff. There's no there's payoff. There's no payoff for, for. What is it? What's the payoff? Like, what's the Rusev end game? They're going to end up back together like, and forget about it? Rusev, Lashley, and hey, I forgot about it. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, <laughs> what's the yeah, point? I, I don't know. Oh, well. stupid. Let's move on. Uh, anyways, yeah, we get a contract signing because we got to make it official between Tyson Fury and Braun Strowman, hosted by Jerry the King Lawler. Ah. Uh, so they're, they're sitting down in their chairs. Braun says, Tyson, you're a great athlete, but you got a massive ego. 
uh, you know, you were trying to steal my spotlight at that SmackDown premiere. But in Saudi Arabia, you're stepping into my world. And I wonder if that was a slip up from Braun because he actually said Saudi Arabia. They haven't said it that in a while. Oh, yeah. They've just been saying Crown Jewel. Yeah, like Crown Jewel or even Jeddah or whatever. But that Crown Jewel. That's yeah. Insane. So. Oh, hey, gee. But Braun says he's going to give him his first loss ever. So get these hands. And then he signs the contract. <laughs> And then Fury signs it, and he picks up a mic, and he says, you know, I'm a fan of yours, man. That's why I was at SmackDown with my family. My kids love watching you flip over trucks and giving those hands to people. <laughs> giving those hands. <laughs> but uh, Fury, you know, he's, he's like, I'm not out of my element in any ring, and I will prove that at Crown Jewel when I knock you out. So and then both men stand up. Jerry goes out of there, runs away, and Braun smashes the table with his fists. So Fury breaks the pen in half and then laughs. And Did you off. see how long it took him to break that pen? Uh, uh, yeah. So was he joking or was oh, he I, actually I, struggling? <laughs> <laughs> like, was he making fun? It's like, oh, you broke a table with your hands. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't yeah, know. I don't it, know. it came I off weird. I, 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 I took it. I, I thought it was he was trying to be funny. <laughs> yeah. That's what I thought. But it, man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, it came off weird. It came off weird. Because like, yeah, it's like, you're not actually struggling. All right. It's like, yeah, I don't know. But. Either way, yeah, yeah, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued to see how this match is booked. Yeah, Strowman's gonna. I mean, Strowman, I imagine Strowman's Bro- gonna lose. Yeah, he's gonna eat a big punch uh, and knock it. So yeah, sell but like I'm, ex- I'm excited just to see what it ends up looking like. You know. Yeah. All Round right. five. Let's go. Round five. Ding, ding. Uh, so injured people, injured people still count because Ross selects Samoa Joe. Who was kind of we didn't mention him yet, but throughout the nights they would like cut to the he table. He was him on and commentary. They, yeah, yeah, he was there with his cast. He had a nice pink cast on and a hat. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Renee and Booker T were there, and yeah, so Raw gets Beth, Samoa Joe. Beth Phoenix was there. Oh yeah, Edge's wife. She has a name. Uh, no, I know she's cool. Okay. She's getting better. She's getting better on commentary. Okay, 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 okay. But uh, so Raw gets Joe. SmackDown picks the Miz. Uh, Raw gets Akira Tozawa. Before SmackDown picks King Corbin, so <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, Corbin. And then Raw picks Shelton Benjamin. That'll close out the round. So uh, let's get some fresh Raw picks out here. Buddy Murphy versus Cedric Alexander. Uh, Buddy playing a bit of the heel in this match. Cedric took a great bump at one point where he's like on the top rope, and Buddy just pushes him out, and he crumples, goes bouncing all around to the floor. I don't know, but yeah, it was a fun match. Fast paced. They were flying all around but eventually murphy hits the murphy's law for the win so hopefully hopefully the first of uh, many regular raw appearances for buddy murphy because we haven't seen him and he, he had that little hot streak going and then it just disappeared for months yeah and these, we didn't see him all summer we didn't see him all summer and these two guys i think were fighting around that old cruiserweight title yeah cedric at least he had that thing with aj for a bit but yeah oh well, either way fresh matchups we'll see we'll see oh yeah we always will and then we get another announcement for Crown Jewel. Seth Rollins will take on The Fiend once again, but this time in a Falls Count Anywhere match for the Universal title. So, I don't know. Hopefully they've learned their lessons. Hopefully they have a finish booked here. Where else know. could a fall? I, why? <laughs> I, don't get, the, I don't get why it's a uh, yeah. Falls Count Anywhere match. And, and if the I Fiend... feel like it's too dangerous for them to, like, fucking leave. Like, the ring area. <laughs> Yeah, and I don't know how they're going to, like, you can't have The Fiend not win again. The people are just going to be even more pissed at Seth Rollins. I think. And The Fiend's supposed to be on SmackDown now, so how can he win the Universal title? And the finish is going to happen in the ring. You Is it going to be something stupid? You heard, the Undertaker's going to appear? You heard, it, you heard it here right now. Mark it. The Undertaker is going to pop up no. Tombstone Bray. But, uh, for what? Why? Because he attacked Kane so, a while ago. So? A while ago. That's my kayfabe brother, the mayor of Knoxville. <laughs> Um, All right. Yeah. yeah. And, so, anyways, and, so and there was a slight boo when this came on. I think. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Sometimes, I think, sometimes I think it's just a boo for the Crown Jewel logo in general. Oh, okay. Many times they talk about it, but okay. Uh, anyway, Stephanie's out again for the final round of the 2019 WWE draft. Ross selects the man who should have gone much earlier, Rey Mysterio. Finally. And then, yeah, finally, and then SmackDown picks Shorty Gable. So. That's the name. That's the name. Raw picks Titus O'Neil. SmackDown gets Elias, another injured man who's been on the wayside. And then the final pick of 2019, someone that I've been waiting to see come back, Liv Morgan. 
Big pick. Man, this is crazy. This is crazy. She gets, um, uh, she gets selected over both Ruby Riot and Sarah Logan. <clears throat> Have you seen the list of free agents? Yeah, now, I was that's gonna, the list that's disconcerting. With I was going to get to that at the end of the oh, show. Oh, okay. Oh, you already have that list. Well, well, prepped. I have some, but yeah, we can talk about. It. Oh my god. I mean, we can talk about it right now. If you of want. course, yeah, of course. Like when you see like yeah. the Iconics or yes, like Cesaro. Of course, Cesaro. The the Authors of Pain. They've been hyping up lately. AOP, who's been getting promos. Fire and Desire. Uh, like they've been featured. That's a, pretty so good. Two two women's tag teams are not. Yeah, a division that you need every team you, you can need get. All of them. Oh yeah, and two good, like two that to have been together for a long time that have story or like the characters to them. And uh, mm-hmm. another guy, Luke Harper, you just brought him back. Ember Moon, uh, the Usos. I know they're kind of hiding them right now. <laughs> and most of all, your favorite, No Way Jose. Oh, oh, no God. Way Jose. Thank God. Uh, Thank yeah, God. so. And then, of course, there's the guys that'll never be dressed, like The Undertaker and John Cena. Mm-hmm. They can come back anytime. They, yeah, they, Goldberg. Yeah, they were free. Oh, he's on that list? Goldberg's on that list, is he not? I don't know. Gold- no, I'm not saying. No, I mean none of these guys are actually on the list. They're the super free oh, agents. Oh yeah, okay. The, hypo- John Cena, the hypothetical Goldberg. list, yeah, like Triple yeah. H. And, uh... But yeah, no, a guy like Cesaro though, there's no excuse for him not being drafted. And... Yeah, but fuck it. I mean Zack Ryder, Kurt Hawkins, who cares? Who cares? <laughs> right. But anyways, uh, let's get some women's tag action. The Kabuki Warriors taking on Natalia, who comes out, cuts a quick promo. Uh, she she says, uh, you know, Lacey took me to my limits, so let's have a tag team with her now. So Lacey Evans, what? Kind of surprising here. Yeah, she was she was a bit of a baby face for this match. No, oh, no, I'm uh, saying, uh, I'm just trying to think about it. Like, okay, uh, for, on my team, I want the person uh, who she says she was impressed by her and uh, as a competitor, she earned some respect for Lacey. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, Asuka, Asuka looked great here. She had some green face paint bleeding from her eyes and mouth, kind of like matching the look of her masks. I love it. It was a cool look. Yeah. Kyrie, she even had like a little, little tiny little face paint near her eyes. But uh, early on in the match, Kyrie Sane hits a very stiff looking back fist to Lacey Evans outside the ring. She's been getting hit in the head a lot lately with some stiff shit. Uh, and then Natty and Asuka, they go at it in a while, good, have some good reversals in the ring, get the sharpshooter locked in, but then Kyrie saves Asuka. Asuka's doing real good at playing the cocky heel, just all these little kicks to the face and shit. Uh, And then eventually, uh, Asuka makes the blind tag on Kairi. Lacey doesn't see it, so she hits the woman right on Kairi, saying the wrong woman. So Asuka runs in, rolls her up from behind for the three count. But yeah, this was, I don't know know if I say a baby face turn, but Lacey was playing a baby face role in this match, which we've never seen before. Yeah, it was uh even if it was a uh, even know, it was just for one night awkward pairing or whatever you know yeah well because yeah at least they're split up we know Lacey's on SmackDown Natty's on Raw so this is officially the last so we're, time we're until... one night in to the post draft world and they already they no they it's already... not post draft until the show's over until yeah the no it wasn't I think Lacey Evans drafted like the night before. <laughs> Well, the draft's not concluded until oh, of course, it's fully of course, concluded. you can trade trade draft picks, right? I'm going to trade you a yes. third rounder for two fi- fifth rounders or something. You know? Exactly. There you have it. There you have it. And then, I guess this is the, that was the main event match because then we cut to the Firefly Funhouse. Uh, Bray's there, and he says people have been saying me things, mean things about Seth, but he he thinks that Seth is brave and strong, but he never forgets. And then Ramblin' Raven pops up. He's like, Seth, dude, man, come on. I'm scared. He's mad. So Bray says, go play. Get out of here. And that's when Rollins just comes flying in out of nowhere. How did he find the funhouse? I don't know. He found it, though. He's just attacking. He's beating the shit out of Bray. And all the puppets are like, no, no, stop. They're they're playing. And then Bray stands up. And he's just like, Seth, why are you doing this to me? Uh, and then Seth just continues to beat him down, and you can hear the crowd booing in the background. They hate him. The they hate him. The boos were coming in. Uh, yeah. Coming and in then hot. Seth says, burn it down. And then he pulls out a lighter, and he lights the funhouse on fire. See, and it's it, just... it, it, it's like it's like somebody, it's like there's a small group of people that are, are trying to explain to Vince what the Firefly Funhouse is. And he's like, um, 
and you know, and it's Bray and a small creative team, and they're saying like, you know, in the Firefly Funhouse isn't a place; it's what it represents, right? It's 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 inside your mind. It's like that safe place you go to, <laughs> and then yeah. Vince is just there, like, burn it down. Yeah, burn it, burn it. It's like, no, 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 you so, can't burn it. It's like, it's like, it's a, uh, it's not real. It's in your head. It's that. It's it's the place where you feel comfort and at home. Burn it! Like, because oh, okay, like, okay. th- this, because if Seth just kind of found the Firefly Funhouse as if it was just like a yeah. dressing room at the arena, that kind of posits I mean, the world that well, like Bray that... Wyatt is going from like city to city with his suitcases full of his Firefly fucking Funhouse. Well, I mean, uh, I don't know. Yeah, where so you're do? telling me that I Seth mean, allegedly could... they uh... it t- oh, so it was two hours within the vic- or three hours within the vicinity of Denver was where the fucking Firefly Funhouse, wherever he could have gotten to in that amount of time. It could be filmed at the arena. Maybe they do film them there every week. You see what I'm know. saying? I do. Yeah, it's 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 where do they want to draw the line between what's well, they... kayfabe and what's real and what's uh... well, they've no. It, it seem it seems like in one. In this one segment, they've just destroyed the Firefly Funhouse. Well, he literally, literally and figuratively, though you know, or like, <laughs> and you know, and like, not literally. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, you know what I'm saying? Bray Wyatt, Bray Wyatt keeps like they've, uh, they've, uh, yeah, they've kind of they've broken some established some. Uh, they some fucked un, it up. The unwritten they, they, established barriers that um, you, you don't need to use all these fancy lingo mumbo jumbo. They somehow found <laughs> a way to take something. Oh, that I'm got not complimenting anything Seth Rollins has done in the last insanely over, insanely but, over. And then they yeah. Just, so he's so he burns it. We hear the laughter. We see the glimpses of the fiend, and that's the end of all. And then we just hear booze, boo, booze. There was a couple. Uh, a couple He's the new Roman Reigns. There was a couple great post, uh, you know, videos people put up on Instagram or Twitter or whatever. Just like you know, when the lights go up and the crowds are slowly walking away, just everyone's booing. Yeah, fuck you, Rollins. We hate you now. Fuck you, Rollins. But why not just like fuck you? You know, you <laughs> fucked up Firefly. You fucked up the Fiend. Yeah. You know, are we at that? Are we at that point yet? I don't think like you no. can call it. A, People you can, still love the fiend. You can call it a DQ finish all the time, but nobody is okay with that hell of a self finish. Like no. nobody is cool with it right off the bat, right? And now yeah. we've turned the Firefly Funhouse into a physical place that resides three hours within the Denver metropolitan area. That's exactly where it is. We'll find out next week. Well, I mean, hopefully they're within three hours or else, uh, you know, Seth's not going to be able to get there in time. What if Seth went to the wrong room? It was just a replica. Yeah, the, yeah. It was a replica based on the image. Uh, ba- based on what's on. going on in Bray Wyatt's yeah. actual head. Yeah. Um. Yeah, this needs to turn around quick because, you know, I don't see Bray Wyatt getting a win in uh, in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, but then they're gonna have to do another bullshit finish, which is gonna piss people off even, even more. more. <laughs> See, like, I guess the only caveat is that it's kind of buried under Crown Jewel because people are already shit on that show, anyways. Yeah, maybe if they but, if it's a and shit. they have two other big matches to. With, Why don't you just to, not? Yeah, because I don't think this is gonna be the main event. I think Velasquez will be the main event. But couldn't you just like in in reality just like not do the match? <laughs> yeah, but. I don't know. The, the prince probably wants the fiend. Maybe he's paying enough money. Maybe the fiend will win. Hey, how how much want. is fiend winning money? I guess it's like yeah. any. That has to be more than they made from Hell in a Cell. Because there's a lot of the fiend merch out now, so they yeah, they the, got to know the that masks, he's, the uh, all these the, sweaters, the let, let me, me in and, shirts. You know, like he's yeah. put he's pushing it. Yeah, oh. kids love him. They're not scared. They like him. They like the guy. What can I say? Anyways, mm-hmm. folks, that was the end of uh, that was it. That was Monday Night Raw. Yeah, that was your draft. So hopefully, I mean, other than Crown Jewel, Survivor Series, the Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, SummerSlam, Money in the Bank, everyone's brand exclusive. <laughs> Mixed match challenge. Uh, what else is there? Okay, yeah. You know. On a serious note, besi- <laughs> on a serious note, said. besides one of those like twelve things <laughs> that you just listed. I off. mean, for the most part, I think we will notice a difference. Uh, weekly television should be more consistent with, uh, yeah, who's who and knowing where's what and who's the champion of which tag team division <laughs> of which tag division yeah that's gonna be a little <laughs> yeah. bit easier um so. yeah i give it a month 
I think <laughs> I think oh, um, wow. we're gonna have Crown Jewel and then something's gonna work because then it's like Crown Jewel right into Survivor Series, so they I think they kind of have to do it anyways, and then you know right then then we're into Royal Rumble season, so really I mean, we'll see. so I give it a month. Ah. There you have it. There you have it, folks. Mike, uh, it's about time with that. It's about time we end the show. Um, should we just get to our favorite thing that we definitely do every week? Sometimes twice. Sometimes twice. It's the wrestler of the week. Yes. It's the wrestler of the week. Of the week. The wrestler of the week. Of the week. Of the week. The wrestler of the week. Of the week. Of the week. The wrestler of the week. Of the week. Of the week. The wrestler of the week. The wrestler of the week for me. Um, you know what? Because I got I got what I wanted finally. Bailey, that Bailey heel turn. She gave it to me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Easy choice. That was my pick as well. Of course, it was your pick. You know, I wish. You know, it maybe. Uh, you know, even because their first heel turn wasn't even such a turn. It it, it almost felt. You know, it was more like a lean. And now she really yeah. went into it. Uh, this was good though. Yes, this was. I liked it. The look, the music. You'll hear the new music next time. Great and. The attitude. She's not smiling. She's not. She's ripping signs. She's that literally shows. ripping. Like little children are making signs, yeah. and she's just like, "Fuck you to your sign." <laughs> exactly. Fuck to your sign. And there you have it, folks. There you have it, folks. Bailey, you are the unanimous wrestler of the week. Uh, thanks for listening. Remember to rate, review, like, subscribe to the show, all the things. Apple Podcast, Spotify, Google Play, YouTube. We'll probably be back with another show. And see, like at this rate now, I think our next show would be AEW NXT. And then the next show, oh, maybe, shit, maybe that's how we do it. Yeah, we could Maybe that's that how way. we do it. So you do, but we'd still, you uh, do SmackDown, pay-per-view, Raw. That's a show. I, like, you know, hypothetically, if there's oh, whatever pay-per-views yeah. in the middle there. And then the second show is Wednesday night. It's like, so it becomes like our Wednesday night wars show. But what, so which day would we? We need a whole different theme for, if it's a show for the Wednesday Night War specifically. I want, I'm picturing the theme we have already, but just maybe with, like, explosions in the background. <laughs> you know, just kind of, like, on beat, just, like, yeah. poof, you know, shit like that. That could be a lot of fun. <laughs> well, folks, there you have it. I think I just had a little epiphany. We'll figure, we'll figure, we'll figure this out. out. Either way, we'll this, this the out. shows will keep coming. The show, will keep, keep... the show will keep coming, of course, anytime that uh, any anything in the wrestling world happens. Uh, but I think it's about time that we sign off. Yes. Um, yeah. Great, fi- great finishing thoughts, Mike. Okay. Remember thanks. MSN? <laughs> MSN Messenger. Sign out. We're signing out. Thanks for listening, folks.